very small shaft like that, okay? This is x-axis and in the vertical direction, we have y, okay? So right now, we're in this situation, okay? Now, this is the bending moment at any position, okay? And this bending moment generates a distribution of a stress from the top to the bottom, okay? So if we see from the side, okay? This is going to be the normal stress. because of this, okay? What I'm saying is that if I have a shaft, I'm not going to draw, suppose I have something like this, and it's going to deform maybe something like this. Let's suppose that it deforms like that, right? So in any of these positions, for example, here, this is the situation. Okay, I have this bending moment, okay, in this cut and all of that. Now, let's suppose we rotate this. So when we rotate, okay, the shaft, if everything is uh, adequate, correct, okay, the shaft, when you rotate, let's suppose we rotate 180 degrees, right? So what's going to happen? the deformation, the profile will be the same. It will be the same, but the problem will be that this point will be down here. So the bending moment distribution in the blue and in the green situation is the same, it's the same. The only difference is that this point, which originally was at the top, right now is at the bottom. No, so this point was supporting an strain with, that we call it at the top. But now, okay, we can measure, and this is supporting a different strain because it's in a different position okay now if we consider that the shaft is not uh, plastically bended okay so we can assume that the bending moment distribution in the blue situation and in the green situation are the same we can write it down okay let me change color because i don't like this see in the two, uh, situations, okay, blue and green, the bending moment distributions the same. So this is what we're assuming, okay? Uh, if we had a bended, a, a permanently, permanently bended shaft, this would not be the same. It, this is not, this wouldn't be true. But we're assuming that the shaft is in good shape and we can assume that the profile the deformed profile in two situations is the same and the bending moment are the same. So uh, this is what, what we are going to measure, okay? Now, the problem is this, okay? We do not have, okay, a situation when we had the, the shaft in the absolutely straight position, okay? If we had this shaft in the absolutely straight position, then, in here, the strain would be zero, right? And then when we apply the, the weight, this will deform and this value, which originally was zero, will increase to this value at the top. That's the problem. We do not know this situation. 
So what do we do? Okay, what we need to do is we can get, all what we need is the difference between this value and that value. We need the difference, okay? And that's what we do, see? We get the strain in the blue situation and then we subtract the value that we obtain for the strain when we have rotate the shaft by 180 degrees. That's what we need, okay? So we do not have a condition at which the whole shaft is free of any stress. So we, we can, it, it's extremely difficult, right? We should have, I mean, we should have many hands in order to hold the shaft, right? Because the weight is always up, acting, but we should sustain it. So we, okay, right now we are in a very straight position. And in that this condition when there is no stress. But the problem is that we cannot have, okay? So, what we can do is to measure in the two conditions okay and then calculate the difference that's what that's what we try to do, okay? As a matter of fact, uh, see, this experience is helping us in order to see if we are able to apply this in the real ship, right? Uh, in this way, we could try to apply these relations in order to calculate their reactions because this is a very difficult thing to do in the real world. Okay, so that's, hopeful, hopefully, that will help you to, to uh, to start this, this uh, the, the homework, okay? People, is there any questions about this? Is there any questions about this? Any questions? No, okay, so we consider that this is closed case, okay? Now, let's go on now. Last uh, class, we presented the idea that when we have a piece of the beam, of the beam and we have a cut, two cuts defining this piece, right? In general, the bending moment applied on one end is different than the bending moment applied on the other. In general, they, they are different, okay? Now, if they are different, then comes the problem. Because if we consider a piece, a segment of the beam, since the two bending moments are different, then the axial force on the sectors on both cuts is not going to be the same. If these two axial forces are not the same, we are in trouble. Because the, the segment that we are considering is not in a static equilibrium. So we are just, uh, we have deduced an expression to evaluate the rate of change, okay, of this axial force in the two uh, cuts. That rate of change of force, we call it last week, last class. How did we call this rate of change of force? Shear flow. Exactly. That's the shear shear flow. Now, we want, we want to calculate the shear for flow, of course, because that's, that's going to be a step in order to calculate what we need to calculate, okay? And what we need to calculate is the stress. In this case, the shear is stress, okay? You did probably a test. You got a piece of material and you pull it, right? If you go to up to a certain value of stress, 
not because this is tension, it's normal stress, right? The material start doing strange things, okay? We get that the, the relationship between the, the applied force and the elongation was not linear anymore, okay? And eventually you see that there is some yielding because you don't need to increase the force and you see that the elongation increases. And finally, okay, you, you see that the, the specimen breaks up completely. Okay, so something similar could happen, but not in tension, but in shear. So we have to calculate the shear stress in order to compare it with an acceptable value of the shear stress for the material. So we're going, we have to recognize that there is one normal stress that we, can, that we cannot or we shouldn't overcome. Similarly, there is a shear stress that we should not overcome or pass. Okay? Sigma yielding tau yielding. So that's the idea of what we are trying to do here, okay? Now, there was a question at the end of the session, the previous session, right? Can you see my screen, people? Yes, doctor. Anybody? Yes, doctor. Okay, so this is what we were studying yesterday and Q of Y is the first moment of the segment. Okay, of the sector, I'm sorry, of the sector. So we said that uh, Q of Y, instead of integrating, we could integrate it in the sector. Instead of this, we can say that this is the position of the centroid of, this, of the, the sector multiplied by the area of the sector. Okay, now, this is because we wanted to calculate the uh, integration of the stress, okay? So the, the integration of stress gives us an axial force. And from there, this is what we obtain. Now, we insisted that when we define, okay, this is the sector that we want to integrate, we said, okay, we're going to start up here. And this is the value of y which define all of this. This is the sector that we're analyzing right now. And we can make different cuts. For example, I can go down, and in this case, this Y is going to be negative. And from here, we integrate from here all the way up to here. Why up to here? Because I will explain in, in on Tuesday, here, this is a, a section which has a symmetry plane, and in here, tau, there's going to be y, x is going to be zero. No, z, z, cx is going to be zero. So we can integrate from here all the way to here. Now, we can go down, right? And we can go, from, for example, from this point, and we can integrate all the way up to here. Somebody was asking about that. Now, if we want to calculate this sector, the integration is going to be long, okay? And we are wondering, is there any possibility that instead of integrating in this way, we could try to use the integration in this and relate it to the, the full section? Yes, that's what I said before. Okay, so I'm going to explain that this morning, okay? So before do, do, doing that, let me erase all of this because I don't want to get confused. Este, Andy, if there were any questions, please let me know, okay? Because I, I cannot see the, the hands. And people, please don't write on, on, my, on my, because I can get confused, okay? So the question is, we make a cut here, and this is the sector that we are going to analyze, okay? So let's call it sector S1. And the question is, is there anything 
that we can do in order to avoid such a long integration and use this one here that we call it sector two. And yes, there is some, okay? Now, if we integrate, okay? The whole half section. See, what I'm saying is that if we integrate all of this da, 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 up to here, the value has to be equal to zero, right? Because this section has no axial force, right? So the same, the same thing that happens on the left must happen on the right. So we can say that P is equal to the integration of sigma x dA, and this is equal to minus mz divided by i sub c, the integral of y dA, and this has to be zero. So if we integrate over the whole section, the integration has to give us zero. So, of course, the bending moment, the inertia, they are not zero. So we have to be certain that this integration over the whole half section has to be zero. So we can say that the integration of the whole section equals to zero. And now we can separate this half section in two parts, S1 and S2. So we can say that this is equal to the integration in section one and also in section two. Okay, so now, so since adding these two, we have to have zero, we can say is that the integration over the section one, which is the, the integration that we need. So we go like this, like this, and up to here, this is the integration that we need. And, but instead of doing that, we can take this, this term, put it to the other side, and we can say that that's equal to minus the integration of S2. Any question, people? Any questions so far, people? Anybody? People, people, I need, I need questions. Are, are you with me? Okay, now let's suppose that I define similarly to this, uh, to the upper side, we define this as S. Okay. Anybody tell me how much is going to be this integral? A deduction, and I'm going to ask somebody to evaluate this integration. Is it going to be zero? No. No, you have to integrate in this part here. Thickness. Thickness. Uh, Remember, multiplier. 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 Just a second, just a second, please. There are some people who got confused. Okay, this integration, okay, right now, you have to give me, see this integration here, you have to give me the area of the sector in times multiplied by y average. Okay. Mr. Kimi, Elvis Kimi, what's the area of sector S2? Mr. Kimi. You there, Mr. Kimi, Elvis Kimi? No? You want to answer? Fine. Mr. Soria, are you there, Mr. Soria? Yes, I What would be the area of the sector S2? Uh, oh. Oh. 
Mr. Hidrobo, Esaú Hidrobo. What would be the area of S2? Now, Mr. Carriel, what would be the area of S2? Come on, people, I know it's Friday, but we should do it. Uh, B minus S. Right, B minus S, that's the length. For T. Yes, so that's the area. And uh, Mr. Vasquez, Kevin Vasquez, what would be Y average? Mr. Vasquez. It's going to be a H over 2 plus. No, 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 no. Come on. H over two is fine, but we need something else there. Miss, Miss Sanchez, Raisa Sanchez, what do we need? H over two, what we are missing? Miss Sanchez, what are we missing? Um, H, uh, ah, that's H over two. Anybody, anybody, Mine. what we are Mega missing? Mega. What? Mega. Mega. Exactly. Mega. Yeah, it's pointing downward. So this is going to be minus h over two. It is now, because we are going down, right? Exactly, exactly. The, that's why I put it here. This is the origin. This is the x-axis. Positive is upward, negative is downward. Now, if we consider this negative and that negative, that will give us h over two, b minus s times t. And in this case, s, would be between zero and B. And you see that uh, the, the first moment starting zero, then uh, increases to the maximum and then start decreasing and goes back to zero. Because here, this point or this point here, S is going to be B. And if you replace it in, in the formula that we have, if this S is going to be equal to B, then this term will be zero. So we go start at zero, increase linearly, increase quadratically, we reach the maximum, decreasing quadratically, decreasing linearly until we get back to zero. This is what we draw here. But this area here, okay, we obtain in a much easier way using this uh, change, okay? So instead of integrating over S1, we integrate it in a very simple uh, piece, S2, and we obtain the same value. Is there any questions about this, people? Any questions about this? No, everything is so clear. Okay. This is very important because in, in many cases, uh, the integration could be very long. So instead of integrating in a very long, we can go in the other direction, but we have to be careful with the sign. Okay, now let's go on. Now, we are certain that we have an imbalance. Let me go back here. This is the problem, okay? Pointing to the left, pointing to the left, we have a certain force. And then pointing to the right, this is pointing to the left, and pointing to the right, we have a force which is not exactly the same as this value. So this is the problem. So right now, if we consider this segment defined by this sector and this cut, right, we have a problem. So this produces a net force to the right. So we have to include this one. And that need of this equilibrium will allow us to obtain this formulation. Okay, so let's do this. 
in this morning, okay? And that's what we call the formula for stress, shear stress, okay? So um, we are certain that we have an imbalance, okay? So let's suppose that we have something like this, okay? This is a segment of the beam, okay? This is X direction. In this uh, section, we have a bending moment, which is MZ plus a change. On the other side, we have this bending moment. Because of this difference, okay? And we relate this to the shear force, we have a difference force in on this side and on the other. Well, we have something like this and something like this. In your class notes, please try to write this arrow with different length at this one, okay? If this is Fs, this is Fs plus a differential. And this is related to the shear flow, okay? Now, if this is the segment that we need to be to have in equilibrium. Then in the bottom, we need to include the shear stress. Okay, now the shear stress, okay, uh, we have to make a, a, an explanation, okay, because in this direction, see, as you move in the thickness, the value of tau could change. Now, what we can do is we can assume that B is small, okay. So B is small. So tau, anybody, would you please give me the sub-indices of this tau? What would be the sub-indices of this tau, please? Anybody? Yx. Yx, so Yx and B taken as uniform in the thickness. Okay, so what I'm saying is that if I draw another shear stress here and another shear stress here, okay, since B is very small, the variation of this stress is small and we can assume that uh, we, we can take a, a common value for, for the, uh, the shear stress in the thickness. So if this is constant, we multiply by the area and the area would be the thickness, which is B in general, and the length from here to there, which is dx. The moment multiplied by first moment divided by the inertia. There you go. So this is a shear flow. And this, it has to be equal to that. So this in general points to the right, this general points to the left. So we can say is that summation of forces, in the x direction has to be zero for equilibrium. So we have DF, okay, to the right. And this cancels that one. So we are not going to consider minus tau yx, and then multiply by the area, which is b dx, they have to be equal to zero. Okay, so here, this is q times dx minus tau yx b dx equal to zero. And the formula that we were looking for is that the shear stress, is going to be equal to Q divided by B, okay? Please remember this formulation, okay? Usually we calculate the shear flow because in general, shear flow depends on Q. And this integration of Q as, as we did before, okay? Keeps adding, adding. And in some cases you could have some elements that join at certain points but the integration is going to be continuous in the result, okay? So that's what the, the reason why we usually calculate the shear flow. And at the end, 
we have to remember that in any point where we want to calculate the shear stress, what we do is we divide that uh, shear flow divided by the thickness at the point where we want to calculate the stress. And if we recall this, so we can say that this is the bending moment. This is Q of S in general, and we divide it by S sub C times B. Doctor, yep. I have a question. In yep. the shear flow, is not uh, the shear stress and not the bending moment? No, that's why we were very careful. Shear flow is the rate of change of axial force on a sector in the X direction. That's shear flow. Shear flow. How changes? How does this F of S changes in going from one side to the next one? That's, see, here I have this force. I move from, from this point, from this cut to this one here. So we have a change. How much is this one? So what we can evaluate this is by the rate of change with this is, and this is the shear flow times the distance from this cut to the next one. That's shear flow. That's force per unit length. And we divide it by B, which is length, give us force per unit area. Now, there is something strange here. Somebody said this is the shear, this is the bending moment. No, come on, this is wrong, completely wrong. Yeah, I just told you that. Some, somebody who, see, I was just copying. Who said that? We should make her to pay us a lunch, That's right? Because, okay, so you owe us, you owe us a coffee, okay? In, on, on, the first, on the fourth week that you have to come. No, no, I'm joking, I'm joking. But yeah, thank you. You, you have to be careful, people, because uh, otherwise we will have problems. Now here, just to check, just to check, remember all the time we have to check units. So we have shear force, that's F. We have, this is the first moment, so that's L cubed. This is inertia. Ms. Tapia, what are the units of the inertia, sectional inertia of the beam? Ms. Tapia, what are the units? Over four. Exactly, length to the four. And finally, we have B, which is the thickness is L. So we have uh, three here, cancel with that, and we get F over L squared. That's correct. People? With me. Now, in the next slide, okay, uh, this is tau yx, right? This is the one that we mentioned. But we are going to relate that instead of yx, I want to see it on this face here. Okay, so if that pulls in that direction, on this side, we should have it up, up, and then upward. Okay. No, I don't want red. It's too strong. So I'm going to. We're going to have something like this. Okay. So this pulls in that direction is the same as this one pulls in upward direction, and this one is going to be tau x y. See, the opposite of this one, and they are the same. Okay. So this one here. Is going to be tau, and that's what I'm going to explain in the next slide. Here. So this is like a summary of the whole thing. Okay. So this is the x direction. We have a cut here, and in this cut, I have bending moment there. If we move from this cut to the next one, there is some change have a bending moment at this position, which is different as this one. And we also have here a shear force, which is slightly different than this one here. Now, 
because of this change in in bending moment, then we have an axial force f of s and an axial force f of s. Okay. Now let's assume that v the shear force is positive. Okay. So we want to see if this makes some sense. Okay. So if this is Okay, let's, let's write it. Uh, to visualize the distribution. Oops. Shear stress. Let's consider that B is positive. Mr. Chiriboga, if B is positive, the bending moment on this side is larger or smaller than this one here. Mr. Dr. C. Wright. He, he right. I cannot hear you. Would you please get closer to the microphone? If somebody has problems with the connection, well, tell me. I have problem with the connection, and I go to the next one because we don't. We cannot waste time. Okay. That, you don't have a, big... a microphone, doctor. He right in the chat. She put. Uh, he put uh, larger. Larger. Okay. No, it's the opposite. Why? Because we remember that BMZ, BX, anybody? This is equal to what? Equilibrium. Mr. Nieto, what is this equal to? Mr. Nieto, come on, Mr. Nieto. I know it's V, yes. I know it's v, yes. So if we assume that V is positive, that means that this derivative is negative. So that means that M and C at this position is smaller than M at X. Because, because we're saying that this is positive, so the rate of change of the bending moment is negative. That means that you go from a value to a smaller value on the other side. Okay, good. So that's why you see here that this force, axial force, uh, assuming that the bending moment is also positive, since we, we know that it is less, smaller, this is going to be uh, the shorter than this force here. Okay, so assuming that MC is positive, then FS on the right side is smaller and negative than on the right, on the left, I'm sorry. So what I'm saying is that this is smaller because of this than this one. And if th those two are positive, then this points to the left, this points to the right. So this is smaller. So this wins. That means that we have a net force. If we consider this and that, we have a net force pointing to the right. That means that we need a shear force, a shear stress in that direction. So this one here plus this one here is, is enough in order to have to overcome this force and have this segment in equilibrium. Now, event now, so on the bottom of the segment, how yx points to the left. And tau 
people are careful, x, y, which is this one here, this is x, y, points upward. Okay, so it's it's a reasoning that we are doing here in order to check, okay, if this makes sense or not. Now, finally, do we did we expect? Is this correct that tau x y points upward? People make sense that x y tau x y points upward. Make sense to you, people? Anybody? And why? At the video, they say tail with tail. <laughs> Could you explain that, please? What do you expect? Why do you expect that this, this is tau xy should point upward? Because the sign. It's because um, of the same direction of the shear force. There you go. That's the reason. That's the reason. Remember, when we studied chapter one, what is it that we said? We said, we are going to assume kinematic hypothesis. We are going to assume John Morio, uh, was the Hooke's law. And from there, we obtain a distribution of stress normal stress and we say that's okay but we have to have that this distribution of normal stress is statically equivalent to the bending moment right now the shear stress on the section as somebody said has to be equivalent to the shear force so if we start this discussion assuming that the shear force was pointing upward, okay? We need to have that this, this stress integrated over the whole section be able to recuperate V of X, the shear force. So at, at the end, we're going to do that next, uh, next session. At the end, if this is the section, okay? Here, I have a shear force V. Here I have this is tau. So what we are going to do on, on Tuesday is to integrate this. We multiply tau by area and we integrate over the whole section and we should recuperate V of X. Okay. Um, but yeah, that, that's something that comes uh, eventually. People. Anybody? But doctor, that tau in green is not xy? Why? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, it's the same, but we have to be, this is x, y. Thank you very much. Okay, so. Uh, if we apply our formula, let me go back. If we apply this formula here, the shear force times Q of S and all of that, okay, we're going to have a distribution of the shear stress over the whole section. But we have to be certain all the time that if we integrate that, okay, if we integrate that over the whole section, we have to recuperate the shear force. That means that this uh, uh, deduction, this expression is statically equivalent with the total force acting on the section in the vertical direction, which is the shear force. That means that instead of putting V of X, we are going to consider a distribution of shear stress, similarly as we did with the uh, bending moment. Uh, is there any other question, people? Any other question uh, about this? Uh, I have two minutes. Two minutes. Let me ask uh, Mr. Mr. Jangri Romero. 
How are we doing with the homework? Uh, have you started the homework, Mr. Romero? Not yet. Oh, come on, Romero. When is the homework, when is the assignment due? Do you remember when is the assignment due? When do we have to, to complete it? The last and the five. July five. Anybody knows when you have to turn in your homework? Anybody? July five. When? July five. May. 31. <laughs> no, May 31. May 31. 31. 31. Today is, today is 27. So you have four days, Mr. Romero, to start your homework. That's all what you have. People, the class notes are printed. And uh, yeah, uh, you have to agree with Andy and uh, Maria Daniela in order to come and, and be able to get it if you if you are interested. Uh, okay. We posted an announcement in Aula Virtual, Doctor, about the schedule. Okay, yeah. So if somebody, uh, you, you have to be certain that you come in this, in this, on these hours because on those hours, they're going to be in my office. Okay. Doctor. Uh, okay. Yes. yes maybe, I maybe maybe you send me for Serbian entrega. <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> no, Where are you? Only, only Puerto Rico only only is the joke. No. Okay. okay. <laughs> no, if you need it, if you need it, I, I could try to, to to see if there is some way to do it. Right. Doctor. Okay. Yeah. Doctor. Yeah. It is is it a possible uh, uh, someone who is speaking? Who is someone? speaking? Who is speaking? Uh, Raul Pesan. Okay, go on. It, it is possible uh, someone a student will will go to the faculty today. Uh, um, okay. Uh, See, this is my plan. Okay. Is. Almost 11, well, it's 11.30. In, in a few minutes, I will go to, I have a meeting with uh, another faculty. We're gonna have lunch. And then I'm going back to my office. In about quarter to two, I will go to the Coliseum. I need to do some exercise today because I'm up to here with you people, okay? If you tell me at what time are you coming, Yes, after the Coliseum, after my basketball, I can come back to my, my office and I can give it to you. It's five dollars, okay, okay bring, bring change because I, I don't want to be in that problem. Are you coming okay. today? Are you coming? Uh, it's possible, it's possible. Uh, okay, uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll be in my office in, uh, between probably 3.30 until 4.30, no more than that. Okay. Okay, thank if you. It's possible, if possible, try to let me know through Andy. I, I don't want to give you my my my, my uh, phone number. I, I don't I don't like that. So if you are going to come, tell him to send me an email and uh, uh, a message or something. So I, I, I can know that I can I have to expect to wait for you. Okay. okay? Thank you. Tomorrow, I won't be here. <laughs> <laughs> Have a nice weekend, people. Nice to see you. Thank you. See you. See you. See you.